I'm Sandy Isabellis. I farm on our property with my partner Bill Efrasinas. We have uh, just a small property. We consider ourselves small irrigators. At the moment, we're currently growing persimmons and quinces and some sugar plums, and we've got the ability to also plant some annual crops as well. Bill's been here all his life, and I've been here probably the last 11 years. Bill and I were fortunate enough to uh, receive the grant from Psalms and we used that to actually put in place uh, some new thinking, I guess. The majority of the money went to uh, building a packing shed that allowed us to make more from what we grow. To make more money, we've looked at our value chain. We've tried to be more integrated in the supply chain. And so within pretty much the first season, we were doubling our returns. So it's made a significant difference to our viability, our sustainability and what we can do in the future. We can see benefit there to the region and the ability for us to commercialise that service and use our knowledge and help people build their value chain as well in the region. Hi, I'm Peter Duggan. I'm the presiding member of the Remark Irrigation Trust and we're sitting in our boardroom right now. The Rimac Irrigation Trust is the board that represents essentially the members of the trust who are the growers, the irrigators in this community. Uh, they essentially own the infrastructure and then the board provide the strategic direction and oversight required to manage infrastructure. The RRT was granted $16.3 million to upgrade our infrastructure to better deliver water to our members, uh, almost to a point where they can now have water on demand. So what we've done is we've upgraded all of our large pumps to more modern, more efficient pumps. This enables us to start up and shut down in a more effective manner. Uh, it enables us to run and operate more efficiently. And, and essentially, it enables us to use our existing infrastructure to its full capacity and move water better and cheaper for our members. So it's a bit of a win-win for everybody. Irrigation, certainly, and irrigators were, were feeling threatened by the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, knowing they had to give up water. For companies like the RIT to go and invest into long-lived infrastructure, certainly sends very good signals to our members that we're here to stay, we're here for the long run. And it's also a good indicator to the commodities that are mostly grown in our area, which are wine grapes, citrus, some stone fruit and almonds. It tells them that we have world's best practice, we have world's best irrigation infrastructure, and that we can get water to their door at pretty much the best price that's available. We now actually have entered into a five-year contract to supply environmental water to the floodplains around Remark. We're the first irrigation trust in Australia to have done this, and we can now make the floodplains around Remark look much better, which has great benefits to the local government, to the people that live there, um, and also we'll have tourism benefits. So there's a whole heap of added things have spun off of this. My name's Glenn Don't and just got a dairy farm here at Monteith and we also have a, a cropping enterprise as well around Tail and Bend around 20 kilometres from here. The dairy farm's second generation, we've been here for 36 years. We have about 700 cows all up. Started off 36 years ago with, um, with only 60 cows and it's just sort of built up slowly over time. The grant came along at the perfect time for us. The dairy was built with a high level of automation, so we've got automatic ID, IDs the cows as soon as they walk in, milk monitoring, knows her average milk production, it's got conductivity which is a measure of mastitis which is one of the hardest things to control. Yeah, there's just high levels of automation that really helps in management of cows. I guess the beauty with this grant is it allowed us to build a facility that gives us a lot of um, room for growth, so you, you never know what's down the track with young family that might come into it later on. Anything's possible and we've got the facility that can do it. My name is Richie Roberts. I'm a citrus grower here in the Riverland and I also grow blueberries. So I used to visit the citrus growing areas in California. A similar climate to here in the Riverland and noticed that there was blueberries growing next door to citrus orchards in California. There's nobody that's grown blueberries in the Riverland commercially that I'm aware of. It's a fruit category that's growing significantly worldwide and I thought it was a good opportunity to, to have a go at. The 3IP grant enabled me to plant blueberries on a larger commercial scale. If I hadn't had the grant, I probably would have done it on a very small scale to start with. I've been very happy with how the yields were in year one. I think they've exceeded my expectations. The Riverland has certainly had some tough times. The 3IP grants have really picked up morale of a lot of growers. It's quite an optimistic place to be right now. It's very emotional to think where you are now uh, to where you were four or eight years ago. Investment on that scale from a grant like 3IP makes a difference to the industry and the community.